In section 2.1, we look at the coordinate system, lines, and their graphs. So let's start with the coordinate system, otherwise known as the x and y axis. So we have a real number line here, which is horizontal, another real number line here, which is vertical. Those two real number lines are called the x and y axis, respectively. Those are the most common names given. And they divide the two-dimensional system into four areas. So we have this area up here, this area here, here, and also here. And those are called quadrants. This is the first quadrant. Moving counterclockwise, we have the second quadrant, third quadrant, and fourth quadrant. And you can locate points in the plane by looking at the corresponding value on the x-axis and y-axis to give you what are called the coordinates of those points. Now in the first quadrant, both x and y are positive. In the second quadrant, as you can see here, x is negative and y is still positive. In the third quadrant, both x and y are negative. And in the fourth quadrant, x is positive and y is negative. Now, I don't plan on spending a lot of time telling you how to graph these points or how to locate these points in a plane, as this is review for this course. Um, but if you need extra practice on this, you should definitely seek the textbook and read up on it. Next, we want to talk about the definition of the slope of a line. So here I have the formula for it. The slope of a non-vertical line is given by, loosely speaking, rise divided by run. And if you have two points, x1, y1, and x2, y2, you can get the slope of the line by subtracting y2 minus y1, subtracting x2 minus x1, and then dividing those quantities. And this is only valid if x1 is not equal to x2, uh, because if they were equal, then the denominator would be 0. Okay, so what does that look like? Well, if your first point, let's say, is here, x1, y1, and your second point is here, x2, y2, the slope is just giving you directions on how to get from this point to this point. So you can see that what we need to do is run horizontally this distance and rise vertically this distance. Now, how do you calculate the run? Well, it's the change in the x values. Over here, x is equal to x1. Over here, x is equal to x2. And so all we're doing is we're taking those two numbers and we're finding the distance between them. And the distance between them is you take the larger number, which in this case is x2, and you subtract the smaller number, which is x1. Likewise, for the rise, to figure out how far this is, we take the y-coordinate of this point, which is y2, and the y-coordinate of this point, which is y1, and we subtract those values to get the distance. And that distance is y2 minus y1. So that's what we're doing here. And again, I imagine this is review for most people. Um, let's do a couple of examples. So in the first example, we want to find the slope of the line passing through the points negative 1, 2, and negative 3, 4. And then after we find the slope, we will plot the points and indicate the slope on this plot. Okay, so what I like to do when I have points is just take one of the points and write it down, and then write the other point directly below it. The slope of the line is given by y2 minus y1 divided by x2 minus x1. Now, don't get too caught up on which one is x1, y1, and which one is x2, y2. It doesn't matter. What matters is that you are consistent. So what matters here is that we subtract the y-coordinates and the x-coordinates in the same order. 
So for simplicity here, I'm going to view this point as being x2, y2, and I'll view this point as being x1, y1. So when I do y2 minus y1, I'm literally just subtracting these y values here, which means in this case, I'm subtracting 2 minus 4. And then for the x values, we do the same thing. x2 minus x1, I'm going to subtract these x values, which for this problem is negative 1 minus negative 3. And if you do the math on that, 2 take away 4 is negative 2. And then down here, this is negative 1 plus 3, which is positive 2. And the slope of this line appears to be negative 1. Now, for graphing purposes, I will think of this as negative 1 over 1. Let's go ahead and graph these two points. So one of the points was negative 1, positive 2, which is this point right here. The other point was negative 3, positive 4, which is this point right here. And then we are simply looking at the line going through these two points. Now, what is the, uh, what is the graphical interpretation of this slope? All right, let's zoom in a little bit. To get from this point to this point, I want you to notice that you have to go this direction and then this direction. So you can see we are going down two units, so that's indicated by a negative two, and we are going to the right two units, and that's a positive two. So the slope of our line is down two to the right two, and if you divide those two values, you get negative one. Now, if you take any other two points on the line, for example, if I take this point and this point, I want you to notice that the slope can even be simplified further. To get from this point to this point, I'm going to go down one and to the right one, right? And that is also consistent with our slope, which is negative one. Okay. Let's try another one. Actually, before we do another example, let's just talk about the basic meaning of when a slope is positive versus when a slope is negative. So if you have the graph of a line, and if that line is rising as you look at the line from the left to the right, so this line is going up, those lines have a slope that is positive, okay? So if the line is rising, the slope is positive. And then in the second one, you can see that if the line is falling, if it's going down, the slope is negative. So if the line is falling, the slope is negative. So that's just a nice little piece of information to keep in your head. It's uh, useful from time to time to be able to classify quickly and easily by just looking at the graphs of the lines. Okay, now I wanna talk about the equation of a line. And the first type of equation we're going to look at is the point-slope form of a line. And we're going to derive this equation. So what I'm gonna do here is suppose we have a line and suppose we know one of the points on the line. So x1, y1 is a given point. In other words, we would know these numerical values. And then this point over here is any other point on the line. So these are the variables x and y. Now we know the slope of a line is given by subtracting the y values divided by subtracting the x values. So in this example, it's going to be y minus y1 divided by x minus x1. 
Now, what I can do with this is I can multiply both sides of this equation by x minus x1. And what happens is on this side, these cancel out. And so we get y minus y1. And then on the other side, we have m, which is the slope, times x minus x1. So if you know x1 and y1, right, if that's given, and if you know the slope, then you can find the equation of the line by using this formula. And this is called the point-slope form of a line. Now, you can also add y1 to both sides and get y equals m times x minus x1 plus y1. Okay, this is just an alternative form of the same formula. So this equation here, or this equation here, is what we call the point-slope form of a line, which is summarized on the next page. So here it is. So the equation of a line with slope m and containing the point x1, y1 is given by these two formulas. To be honest with you, I usually just remember the first formula, and then I can always solve for y by simply adding y1 to both sides. So I don't feel like it's really necessary to remember the second formula, but you certainly can if you want. Let's do an example. Find the equation of the line passing through the point 2, 6, and the other point, negative 1, negative 2, and find it in point-slope form. Okay, there are two things you need to know to find the equation of a line. You need to know the slope of a line, and you need to know at least one point on the line. Well, we have two points on the line, so we can pick either one of these points to be our information for our point, but we don't know the slope. So let's go ahead and find the slope. Slope you can find by taking these two points. Remember, I like to write one above the other. And then I'm going to subtract their y values. So I'm going to subtract in this, this uh, direction. 6 take away negative 2. And in the denominator, 2 take away negative 1. And if you do the math on this, you get 6 plus 2, which is 8, divided by 2 plus 1, which is 3. So the slope of this line appears to be 8 thirds. Now we also need a point on the line, and as I mentioned earlier, you can use either of these points. It doesn't matter because they are both on the line. So I'll just pick the first point. I like it better because it has fewer uh, negatives. And now to find the equation of the line, all I need to do is take these values and plug them into the formula like so. So for us, that's going to be y take away y1, which is 6, is equal to the slope m, which is 8 thirds, multiplied by x take away x1, which is 2. So this equation here is just this equation, but with these values plugged in. Now, if they ask you for the equation of a line in point-slope form, you could simply give this as your answer, and this would be okay. Now, what you also could do is you could add 6 to both sides, and if you add 6 to both sides, it will look like this. So this is also an acceptable answer. And then another thing you could do is you could multiply this out. So we would have y equals 8 thirds times x, which is 8 thirds x, minus, and then we have 8 thirds times 2. 8 thirds times 2 is 16 thirds, and then plus 6. And then you can combine these together by getting a common denominator here, which would be 3. And if you do that, this will turn into y equals 8 thirds x minus 16 thirds plus 18 thirds, which is 8 thirds x plus 2 thirds.
Okay, so this would be another acceptable way to write the answer. So it all depends on how they ask for the answer, but all of these are correct. Next, we talk about the slope-intercept form of a line, which I'm pretty sure all of you have heard of at some point. The slope-intercept form of the equation of a line with slope m and y-intercept 0b is given by y equals mx plus b. So m is the slope and b is the y-coordinate of the y-intercept. All right, so what we want to do here is write the equation of a line with slope of negative 4 and y-intercept of 0 radical 2. So for us, we have been told that our slope is negative 4, and our y-intercept has a y-coordinate of radical 2, so that is the value of b. And the equation says y equals mx plus b. So we are just going to plug in negative 4 for our slope and radical 2 for our y-intercept. Oops, let me write that so it looks like a b there. There we go. <clears throat> and if you plug that in, you get y equals negative 4x plus radical 2. So it's very easy to write the equation of a line in slope-intercept form if they tell you the slope and they tell you the y-intercept. Now, the second part of this question says, does the point 0, negative 1 lie on this line? So is 0, excuse me, not negative 1, 0, positive 1. Is 0, 1 on this line? Well, 0, 1 means x equals 0 and y equals 1. If a point is on a line, that means when you plug in the values for x and y into the equation, it should make the equation true. So if we plug in y equals 1, we get 1 equals negative 4 times x, x is 0, plus radical 2. And we're asking, is this true? Well, this means 1 would be equal to negative 4 times 0 is 0, plus radical 2, which says 1 is equal to radical 2. Well, this is false, right? 1 is not equal to radical 2, so the answer is no. This point, 0, 1, is not on that line. And the last thing they want us to do is find the x-intercept of this line. Well, to find the x-intercept of any graph, what you have to do is let y be equal to 0. So if y is equal to negative 4x plus radical 2, I'm just going to plug y equals 0 in for y. So that gives us 0 equals negative 4x plus radical 2. Now, to get the x-intercept, I just need to solve for x. So if I subtract radical 2 from both sides, we get negative radical 2 equals negative 4x. And then dividing both sides by negative 4, cancels this, and we end up getting x is equal to, these negatives here also cancel, and we have radical 2 over 4, which is actually simplified. So this would be our x-intercept, meaning the point radical 2, 4, 0 is our x-intercept. Next, we want to talk about finding an equation of a line given a graph. So if you look at the graph given here, you see that the line we are looking at passes through a given point of negative 2, 3. And then to find the equation of the line, we need the slope. Well, they don't tell us the slope, but they show us the slope. So remember, the slope of the line is the rise divided by the run. The rise is the vertical change. And you can see here that in this case, we are going down two units. So the rise is negative two. And then the run is the horizontal change. 
and you can see that we are going to the right four units, and that's positive four. So negative two divided by positive four reduces to negative one half. So we know the slope of our line is negative one half, and we can see the point that our line passes through is the point negative two, three. And now they want us to find the equation in slope intercept form. So what I can do is go ahead and use the point slope form. This is what I prefer to use. And now I just need to plug in the values. So slope is negative one half. The x coordinate is negative two. And the y coordinate of the point is positive three. And if we plug those in, we get y minus three equals negative one half times x minus negative two. Simplify a little bit. We have y minus three equals negative one half times x plus two. And you could leave this as your answer if they asked for it in point slope form, but they do specifically ask for it in slope intercept form. Remember, slope intercept form is this form. So when you hear that, it just means you need to solve for y. So first, what I'm going to do is distribute here. This gives us y minus 3 equals negative 1 half x. And then negative 1 half times 2 is negative 1. And if I add 3 to both sides, we get y is equal to negative 1 half x plus 2. And this is the equation of the line that you see in the graph in slope intercept form. Next, let's talk about horizontal lines and vertical lines. So a horizontal line in the coordinate system is simply a line that goes straight across and it will pass through two points. The first point I will call x1, b. And the second point I will call x2, b. So notice that the y coordinates are the same. Well, that's because when you have a horizontal line, all of the y coordinates are the same, right? It's the x coordinates that can be different. For a vertical line, it's just the reverse. To find the equation of a vertical line passing through a point, say, a, y1, basically, the vertical line is just going to be a line straight up and down, and it's going to pass through the, the number a on the x-axis, right? So just like this line up here passes through the number b on the y-axis, this one passes through the number a on the x-axis. So when you have a horizontal line, the equation for it is just going to be y equals b, and when you have a vertical line, the equation for it is just going to be x equals a. And that is what is summarized down here. So a horizontal line has an equation y equals a number. A vertical line has the equation x equals a number. So as an example, we're asked to find the equations of the lines described here. So part A, we have a horizontal line passing through the point 2, 3. Okay, so we know that a horizontal line, a flat line, is going to be y equals b, where b is the y-coordinate of any point on that line. Well, the y-coordinate here is 3. So the equation of the horizontal line passing through the point 2, 3 is y equals 3. And for part B, the vertical line passing through the point 1, negative 2. So we know that vertical lines have an equation x is equal to a, where a is just the x-coordinate of the point that it passes through. And so in this one, it's going to be x equals 1. All right, now let's talk about general form. The general form of a line is the equation ax plus by plus c is equal to zero. a and b cannot both be zero. And this a, b, and c that we're talking about here are real numbers. All right, so this is just another format that you can write the equation of a line in. 
So in our first example, they give us an equation of a line in general form, and they want us to write the equation in slope-intercept form, and then also graph the line. Okay, so remember, slope-intercept form means they want it to be y equals mx plus b. So what it means is we need to solve for y. So our equation is 3x plus 2y minus 4 is equal to 0. To solve for y, I'm going to start by subtracting 3x from both sides, which will give us 2y minus 4 is equal to negative 3x. Then I'm going to add 4 to both sides, which gives us 2y equals negative 3x plus 4. And finally, to solve for y, I will divide by 2 on both sides, which means to everything. And dividing by 2 gives us y equals negative 3 over 2 times x plus 4 divided by 2, which is 2. So we've taken the line in general form, and we put it into slope-intercept form. Now to graph the line, let's bring in a coordinate system. And what we need to do is get the slope of this line. So we can see the slope of our line here is negative 3 halves. And we can also see that the y-intercept of our line is this number here, which is positive 2. So remember, positive 2 really means the point 0, 2, because that's where the line hits the y-axis. So 0, 2 is this point right here. And now to graph the line, I'm just going to use the fact that the slope is negative 3 halves, and that will give us directions of how to get from this point to any other point on the line. So the directions are we need to go down 3, so 1, 2, 3, downward. And then we need to go to the right 2, right? So the slope is negative 3 over positive 2. So if I go to the right 2 from there, I end up at this point. So the graph of the line, y equals negative 3 halves x plus 2, looks like this. And you can see the y-intercept is 0, 2. And you can also see the slope of the line, we are going down 3, to the right 2. And that shows your slope is negative 3 over 2. Next, let's discuss parallel lines. So if you have two non-vertical lines, they can be parallel if and only if they have the same slope. And of course, vertical lines are always parallel. So parallel lines have the same slope. A way that I can indicate this is if line 1 is parallel to line 2, then the slope of the first line is equal to the slope of the second line. Perpendicular lines is a little bit more complicated. So if two lines have slopes m1 and m2, if those two lines are perpendicular, the only way this can happen is if m1 times m2 is negative 1, or m2 is equal to negative 1 over m1. So that is to say the following. Line 1 is perpendicular to line 2, means that if the slope of the first line is a over b, the slope of the second line will be negative b over a. So they are opposites and reciprocals when you have perpendicular lines. And remember, the meaning of perpendicular, right? So perpendicular means that if one of your lines looks like this, the other line has to intersect that first line at a 90-degree angle. That's what perpendicular means. All right, so let's take a look at a couple of examples of finding equations of lines involving the concept of parallel and perpendicular. 
So in our first example here, it says to find an equation of a line parallel to 2x minus y equals 1 and passing through the point 2, negative 3, and write the equation in slope-intercept form. All right, so first of all, let's write down the equation 2x minus y equals 1. I'm going to solve for y here by subtracting 1 from both sides and also adding y to both sides. And when we do this, we get 2x minus 1 is equal to y. So the slope of this line is 2. Now, since our line is parallel to this line, this means the slope of the line that we are looking for is also 2. So now we want to find the equation of the line that has a slope equal to 2 and passes through the point 2, negative 3. So I'll go ahead and use our point-slope formula for this. We have y minus y1, which is negative 3, equals the slope, which is 2, multiplied by x minus x1, and x1 is also 2. And this is y plus 3 equals 2x minus 4. And finally, subtracting 3 from both sides, we end up with y equals 2x minus 7. In the next example, they want us to find the equation of a line perpendicular to a given line and passing through a given point. So the line that it is perpendicular to has the equation 2x plus 3y minus 1 equals 0. I'm going to solve this for y to be able to find the slope of this line. I'll do this by subtracting 2x and adding 1 to both sides of the equation. That will give us 3y equals negative 2x plus 1. And then we can divide both sides by 3. And when we do this, we end up getting y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1 third. And we do this now because we can see the slope of this perpendicular line, and it is negative 2 thirds. So the line that we're looking for, since it's perpendicular to this one, its slope is going to be the opposite reciprocal of negative 2 thirds, which is 3 over 2. And we know our line is passing through the point 4, negative 1. And so now I can use the point slope formula for a line. Plug in all of our information here. We have y minus negative 1 equals the slope, which is 3 halves, multiplied by x minus 4. Simplifying further, we get y plus 1 is equal to 3 halves times x, and then minus 3 halves times 4, and 3 halves times 4 is 6, so we have minus 6 there. And then minus 1 from both sides gives us y is equal to 3 halves x minus 7. Now let's take a look at an application. Here it says a 2017 Honda Civic's value over time can be approximated by the equation V, which stands for value, equals negative 2200 times T plus 22,000, where T denotes the number of years after its purchase. Answer the following questions. Okay. Part A. What will be the value of the car six years after purchase? So six years means T equals six. So for this, I just need to take my equation V equals negative 2200 times T, so I'm just plugging 6 into there, so negative 2,200 times 6, plus 22,000. And from here, we just need to do the math. So if we take 2,200 times 6, that's going to be, uh, well, it's a negative, so negative 13,200 plus 22,000. And if we add 22,000 to that, we get 8,800. 
So what is the value of the car six years after purchase? $8,800. For part B, it says, what are the slope and V-intercept? And what do they represent? Well, the slope, remember, is just the number in front of your independent variable. So the slope for this line is negative 2,200. And your V-intercept, usually it's a Y-intercept, but because this is equal to V, we're calling it a V-intercept, that's this value right here, 22,000. So the slope is negative 2,200. And the V-intercept, which I will call B, is 22,000. What do they represent? Okay, well, the slope tells us the rate of increase or decrease of the value of the car. So negative 2,200 means that it loses $2,200 per year in value. So the value of the car is going down $2,200 every year after you buy it. The V-intercept represents when time is zero. And so this represents the initial value of the car. So when the car was brand new, it was worth a value of $22,000. For the third part of this problem, it says, for what value of t will the value of the car be zero? So the question is, when will the value be equal to zero? So for this one, we take our equation, and we are going to replace v with zero. And this gives us zero equals negative 2200t, plus 22,000. And I'm going to solve for t by adding 2,200t to both sides. I'm adding because I would like to get my t's to be positive, if possible. So this gives us 2,200t is equal to 22,000. And solving for t, we divide by 2,200 and we get t equals 10. So the answer to the third part of this question is 10 years. In 10 years, supposedly, the value of this car will be zero. Now, you should, of course, take this with a grain of salt because, obviously, in 10 years, if you still have the vehicle, it's worth something. It's not ever necessarily going to be worth zero. So this model for this problem is just an approximate model, okay? In our last example, it says, in 2010, there were 1,400 Canada geese in a wildlife refuge. In 2016, their population increased to 1,820. Part A says, write an equation for the population of Canada geese, y, in terms of x, where x is the number of years since 2010. Okay, so let's organize our thoughts here. In 2010, we have some information, and in 2016, we have some information. So in the year 2010, there is the variable x. x is going to be 0 in 2010. And six years later, it's 2016, so x will be 6 in 2016. And then y represents the number of geese. So in 2010, it was 1,400. And in 2016, it is 1820. So if I want to write an equation for this, it's a linear equation. And we need y equals mx plus b, or y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. You basically have two points here. You have the point 0, 1400, and 6, 1820. To find the slope of the line that goes through these two points, we just use the slope formula, 
1400 minus 1820 divided by 0 minus 6. This is negative 420 divided by negative 6, and this is 70. So the slope of our line is 70. Now the y-intercept, b, b is actually this number right here, because remember, the y-intercept is the y-value when x is 0. So the y-intercept here is 1,400. And this means that I don't have to use this equation. I can use y equals mx plus b, since we know both m and b. So the equation of our line that models this problem is y equals 70x plus 1,400. What are the slope and the y-intercept, and what do they represent? Well, we already talked about this. The slope is 70. The y-intercept is 1,400. What does 70 mean? It means that the population of geese is increasing by 70 per year. And the 1,400 represents the initial population. And then it asks the question, when will the goose population reach 1,960? So what they're asking is, when will y be equal to 1,960? So we just plug in this value of y into our equation here. Doing that gives us 1,960 equals 70x plus 1,400. We can solve for x by subtracting 1,400 from both sides. This gives us 560 is equal to 70x. And if we divide both sides by 70, we get x is equal to 8. So the answer to this question is, in 8 years, the population will be 1,960.